Alright, so I put up a before and after of this image and people were asking me how I color corrected it so that the red fill light was gone. Um, I've never done an online tutorial before, so bear with me. I edited that photo on no sleep, so I'm gonna try to recreate it and show you guys a little bit of what I did. I'm gonna open this up in Lightroom. I already have it in there. Right off the bat, what I do whenever I'm editing a photo is I click auto. It's pretty ridiculous in my opinion, but I just kind of like to see what the program thinks and usually I undo it. Um, after that, I'm going to go and play around with my white balance because clearly the color is not what I want it to be and in order to correct the color, I have to adjust the color. So I'm going to bring this top slider down and tweak the second slider a little bit and adjust my tint and temperature. Just a little bit, I'm going to do more color correcting um, down below. Then we're going to go down to the split toning panel, and that's where I actually do most of the color correcting for this. Right off the bat, what I'm going to do is um, take the saturation for the shadows and the highlights up pretty high, so that way I can see, for the most part, what it's affecting, and then if I want to take the color down, I can. So we'll start off with 55 in the highlights for the saturation and saturate the shadows at 55. Then I just take the hue and slide it until it kind of looks a little bit natural to me. Um, and I also have this habit of wanting my numbers to be even, so I'll go in and change it to 145. Then I'll take the shadows and move that and tweak it around a little bit so that the skin tone pops. And there's your before and after. Um, this image is a little dark, so I'm gonna take it up a little bit and play around with my exposure. Um, I'm actually missing some of the blue, so I'll play around with the white balance and see if I can get that to go back. I might have to adjust my split toning a little bit more. Um, there it is. I think. Yeah, there we go. And I also have forgotten to lens correct this image, so after I adjust the saturation of my split toning, I will go down and do that. To get the right contrast, I tweak the tones and play around with the highlights and shadows and stuff and go around and see. I mean, you kind of just have to get an eye for it and what looks right, I guess. I'm really not a good teacher, I'm really honest. On live shots, I always take my clarity somewhere between 10 to 25, usually 10, 15, or 20, to make it pop a little bit more. Um, Um, after lens correcting it, I noticed that my image was overexposed, so I'll take this back down and bring it up a little bit, and then I'll probably, yeah, I'm gonna go into the tones and take all of my lighter values down a little bit, because her face is looking a little blown out now. I also feel like the 
lower half of her is looking a little dark as opposed to how bright the top of her is. And it could probably make those reds pop a little bit more. So let's add um, a filter down here, make that just a little bit brighter. I take the exposure all the way up just to see what area I'm applying it to, and then I'll drop it down a little bit. And adjust it to be an appropriate and natural looking light value. It makes it pop a little bit more and brightens it up a little bit, it makes it look not so dark. Not as dark, but not unnaturally bright either. And I don't like how when I shot this image, I didn't get her whole body in the shot, so I'll crop it. Um, I always crop, and for visual aesthetic, this is how you should crop in between the joints. If you crop it right at her ankles or her knees, it looks awkward. Um, and then I'll save this preset so that I can apply it to my other images. I have all this stuff checked and this is usually how I do it. And then I just save it in my presets. As you can see, I have a lot of presets over here. Um, and then that's my before and after. Um, I hope that this showed you something. Maybe, maybe not.